Here on Vancouver Island, we've seen an absolute explosion in the number of people who are deciding to build tiny homes on wheels. And today we've traveled to the Cowichan Valley, where one young mother has built an absolutely spectacular home for her and her daughter. Hey Natasha, how's it going? Hi Bryce, good, how are you? Good, thank you, lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you too, thanks for coming. It is absolutely my pleasure. This is such a beautiful home that you have here. Thank you. Yeah, we've been here for over a year now. Fantastic, so yeah. obviously we're here to see the house today, yes. but there is so much more going on here. You've got this incredible greenhouse and a farm stand out front. Exactly. First, can you tell me about all of that? Yeah, so uh, it's a third acre of land and we moved the tiny here in the spring. Uh, so we have incorporated the farm stand with the greenhouse so that we can sell some of the herbs and veggies in the summertime while we're here. Brilliant. So yeah. this is actually a new business venture for you as well. It is definitely, yeah. It's a side business and uh, I'm hoping to kickstart it this summer and get things rolling and yeah. So the farm stand and growing your own produce, have you ever done anything like this before? Actually, I have not. I grew up in downtown Toronto and uh, raising my daughter, I've decided I wanted a new lifestyle and so this is something new that I've started. Um, I learned a bit about permaculture going to Cuba and it really opened my eyes um, with survival through planting and living off veggies and yeah, having a garden. <laughs> and now tell me, what was it that actually inspired the build of the tiny house? Having my daughter was a big breakthrough for me. I wanted to be more present with her and have more time to do things. And uh, we drove across Canada from a three bedroom condo and we put all our possessions in the car, me, my sister and my daughter. And uh, as I was living in Victoria, I decided that the rent was uh, unattainable for me. And so in turn, we decided to build a tiny home for me and my daughter to live. So tell me about the design of the tiny home. So the design is on an aluminum trailer. It's eight and a half by 30 feet. Uh, we use a mix of pine wood and the corrugated metal and also metal roofing with the gable roof. Uh, we added on the skylights. They weren't there when we moved in. There was a lot of things we added on uh, when the house was delivered. So it was like a good year of construction. So obviously a build like this, yeah. it's no light task. How did you find the process of building the home? So in April um, 2018, the house was delivered. It was a skeleton. I was really unhappy and I knew I had to finish it with how it was. And we customized everything to build it the way I wanted. And then I was starting to feel like better about how it was looking. But I was at a turning point where I almost wanted to put on the market and sell it. And I had it online and I thought, what am I doing? I'm not going to give up on this project. Like, I want to live this lifestyle. And so I ended up, you know, taking it off the market and really fully finishing it and making it the way I want. And that has made a huge difference, just building it to the way that we wanted and redoing a lot of things also. So it's been a big process of blood, sweat and tears going into the house. Well, I am so glad yeah. that you stuck with it because Me the too. result is just so beautiful. Thank you. And it's really lovely how you've also built this other kind of enclosed greenhouse space off of the tiny house. Yeah, thank you. This has been um, a big addition to add on for storage and for keeping our shoes and things in the winter time. And yeah, we can also grow more plants here. I'm thinking next summer we're gonna do that. It helps block the wind also, I'm finding. Well, this is all super cool. I especially love your parking spot with this incredible greenhouse. That's a remarkable Thank find. You. But I am very interested in seeing the inside of the house. Can we take a look? Definitely, come on in. All right. This is seriously cool. Just walking in here, I can immediately tell that you are truly an artist, aren't you? Yes, thank you. I've been working on a lot of interior design and artwork in here. Also the God's eye on that wall. That took quite a few hours to weave and I really like doing uh, fiber art. It's quite a joy for me. Fantastic. Yeah. So this is a very beautiful and somewhat eclectic style in here. Can you talk to me about the design of this home? Definitely. Uh, the design has been done with the kitchen and living room all in one spot. And then we did the bathroom at that far end. And we've almost made like a three bedroom. There's the loft up there, which is the master loft. And then 
my daughter's loft here, and then there's like a third bedroom down here slash day bed. So it's been a pretty good design and I've been really happy with how it's turned out. Um, we started out with a couch over here, like we had a full futon as an extra sleeping area and uh, we decided to change to floor seating, which you often don't see in tiny homes. No, you don't. So what was the reason for taking the sofa out? The sofa was honestly taking up too much room and with doing my artwork, I wanted to be able to do it on the floor and feel more grounded in floor cushioning and also with the ladder, it just worked out a lot better that way. And it's really interesting how you've divided up the space because we've got your daughter's loft up here, but then you do have this other almost completely self-contained room in this area. Yeah, I pretty much wanted to build like a three bedroom inside the tiny house. So this is a third bedroom. It has wall to wall shelving. It has a closing door and storage underneath. So it's really been a great extra space. And then you've got your daughter's loft above us here. Yeah, we just uh, got the windows put in this spring. So those weren't there and it's opened up a whole new space in here. The morning sun shines through and we really love this new feature on the house. Your daughter's now five years old. How yeah. is she adapting to life in the tiny house? She's enjoying it. She like when we go on vacation somewhere for a few weeks, she's like, I don't want to leave the house. And, uh, you know, she's really become attached to it. And uh, friends love coming over here. She had some friends come over the other day and we were able to have three kids in here on the hammock and playing in the swing here. So it's been great for kids to experience also. Absolutely. So this is a hammock you've got up here then? Yeah, yeah. And uh, you can do it at different heights. So you can do it higher or lower. Um, the kids like putting the hammock quite high, but I suggest to put it lower. Yeah, it's fun for swinging in. You can also like hang off the beam here. It's quite supported and I like doing some exercise here sometimes. <laughs> Very cool. Always nice to have that in the house, right? Yeah. And then over here we have your kitchen, and wow, this is actually a really decent sized bench top, isn't it? Definitely, it's all bamboo, so it was two uh, six foot pieces of bamboo slabs, so it's 12 feet of counter space. And then we found this Blanco sink at the ReStore, and it was uh, another DIY. This uh, tap was found at the ReStore, and um, yeah, there's lots of storage under, so we decided not to do cupboards and kind of keep things temporary for if we have to move in the future that you don't have to worry about putting things in cupboards. Also so much easier than having to build in cabinetry, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, and cabinetry is quite expensive I found, so we uh, decided to, you know, take off the costs of that and uh, we're using like trolleys and things to put under and keep things underneath. It's helped out with space too, like so under here we keep the oven and kettle. Also I like doing some juicing, so we keep our juicer under here and uh, garbage and recycling over there. And I see you've got your fridge there as well as a washer dryer. Yes, uh, washing and drying is very essential with having a little one, so we needed to make sure we could fit that in the tiny home design also. And then is that the bathroom back there? Uh, yeah, so right here beside the washer dryer is um, the sliding door for privacy and I painted it myself. I really liked the theme of like the Tiffany blue and the greys and um, behind here is the hot water tank and it's on demand and it's been really great so far. I have two 30 pound uh, propane tanks that connect to it and they usually last about four months for both the tanks. Brilliant. Yeah. You've got the Nature's Head composting <laughs> toilet down here and I really like how you've customized that. Yeah, I, I definitely wanted to have some continuity um, with the bath and shower and the toilet uh, succulent design also. And it's great that you managed to fit a bathtub in here. Yes, it's a full size bathtub and uh, we used a custom design of a vinyl print of uh, succulents and then some stick on tile to help with the weight on the trailer also. Really nice how that's done. All throughout this house, you can really just see how much of your own art and your character that you've put into it. Little touches like that, they're quite simple to do, but they just bring so much character into the house, don't they? Yeah, they really do, thank you. And uh, I found having the curved um, shower curtain rod was also helping with space, maximizing also, uh, as well as with design. Absolutely. And then, up the stairs, We've got your sleeping loft. 
yeah, so up here is a double size bed and uh, it's great because it's right under the skylights. So the skylights uh, we had put in after we moved the tiny home, so I think it was in June of last year and it made a huge difference with the space also and opening it up and I can see the stars at night and that's why I chose to put the bed this way. I did have it that way before and I decided to just have it right under the window which has been really helpful. Yeah, I think having a double bed and also having this orientation has also enabled you to have quite a lot of spare space up here in the loft as well. Yeah, it's actually made room for like a music area over there and uh, a bit more of a play area for rainy days. So you've been living in the tiny house for a while now. How are you adjusting to life here? I'm finding it to be a new way of living for me. I've never lived in a space this small, so it's 250 square feet. You know, I've mostly lived in like larger houses, so it's like adjusting to the square footage of the space and then working within the space that you make pretty much. And so, yeah, it's been really interesting to see how it comes together and how you can easily adjust and transition. And now what about the budget of this tiny house? What did this actually cost you to build? So it costs just under 100 k and uh, that was because some things had to get redone and a lot of things were customized such as the windows and the upper loft and the skylights so it was just under 100 but when they're built professionally a lot of the time it's over 100k so in the long run it was uh, a good price for a DIY I think. Uh, living in a tiny home has taught me I can do anything I put my mind to like it's taught me to follow through with things when the going gets rough and you're challenged to really like persevere and push through and empower yourself and like just know that you can do it. And I've had so many people come in and help me finish this house from the roof to the plumbing to the electrical to building the ladder and the windows. Like there's been about six or seven different people that have contributed to helping me make this dream come true. And so it's really shown me that like my visions can come to life. Well, I think this home is just so beautiful. You've done such a great job on the build of this. And I love the way that it is just so filled with all of your art and character. Thank you so much for sharing it Thank with me. Thank you, Bryce. Thanks so much for coming here. My pleasure. Natasha has done such a brilliant job in the build of this home. Doing any project is not without its challenges, but she pushed through those challenges and the result is this, an absolutely remarkable home for her and her daughter. And there is no doubt in my mind that the two of them will continue to grow together in this home.